The year 2007 became a turning point in hip hop. The old guard was losing the game to a new school and the event indicating it the most was Kanye West and 50 Cent beef that took almost a half year. Who won the Rap King title? Kanye West or 50 Cent? What were other loud releases that year? And how did M.I.A. turn over the whole game, stealing a big part of fame? Make sure to watch till the end to find out. DJ Drama was arrested that January for selling mixtapes. That was the first massive indicator that every aspect of rap was transforming. Dr. Dre didn't release Detox, and it looks like he will never release it. Raekwon didn't release his only Built for Cuban Links Part 2 as planned, though it did drop two years later. At the same time, Eminem Duck Relapse, still struggling with drug addiction. Any release would have suggested that hip hop's current character was still somewhat uncertain and not wholly dominated by changing trends. The first big release of the year was probably Jesus Price Superstar by Sean Price. Being an underground artist, Sean Price took his piece of success debuting at number 196 on the Billboard 200. But it wasn't enough for the old school to take the lead. The next big date was March 27th with The Dog Pound, Lil Flip, Mims, Red Man, Prodigy, Rich Boy, and Young Buck releasing their albums in one day. The day's winner was G-Unit's Gorilla with Buck the World album debuting at number three on the Billboard 200 chart with 140,000 copies sold in its first week. On April 3rd, Timberland released his second solo studio album, Shock Value, debuting number five on the Billboard 200. However, Timberland's biggest shock was his beef with a colleague, Scott Storch. Scott Storch and Timberland, two of the biggest and talented producers in hip hop, co created the song that became Justin Timberlake's open letter to his ex, Britney Spears. But the successful hit also tore the producers apart. Storch felt he deserved more credit, so they took the battle to wax. I'm a real producer, Tim rapped. You just a piano man. Scott exchanged fire by name checking another Tim collaborator. Your boy Danger got to hate you with a passion, man. He makes the hits while you taking all the credit. Damn. Intense. Thankfully for all involved, it didn't go much further. In the end, Scott would say, we both admitted to being wrong in that situation. June 12th was a day of DJ Cap releasing We The Best. The second album of the producer debuted at number eight on the Billboard 200 and received a mixed reception from critics who considered some of the tracks enjoyable and engaging. Still, they felt it was over bloated with lesser tracks and Khaled's persistent ad-libbing throughout the album. Who knew back then that this ad living would still remain a meme in 2021? Another one. Another one. Another one. Another one. However, Fabulous stole the show from Khaled that day, releasing his From Nothing to Something. The fourth studio album of the rapper debuted at number two on the Billboard 200 and certified gold. The ATL legend T.I. has released one of his most influential albums, T.I. vs. T.I.P., on July 3rd. The album landed at number one on the Billboard 200 and was certified platinum. This month was also remarkable with a release from Common, whose Finding Forever debuted at number one on the Billboard 200, was certified gold, and became the only chart-topping album of 2007 without a single, to chart on the Billboard 100. Plies and UGK stole August from the rap game. The Real Testament and Underground Kings debuted at number two and number one on the Billboard 200 and both were certified gold. In September 2007, the biggest stars of the year, 50 Cent and Kanye West, willfully entangled themselves in a playful beef that attracted major headlines. Both were at turning points in their tremendous careers. Both were dropping their crucial third albums. 
50 Cent was prepared to release Curtis on September 11, 2007, and Kanye was ready in graduation for a September 18th release. However, he bumped it up a week to set the stage for perhaps the biggest non-violent event in hip-hop history. The two duked it out in the conflict to see who would take home a bigger haul of album sales. That spring, 50 Cent earned a pleasant $100 million as a minority owner of Vitamin Water through Glacial's $4.1 billion sale to Coca-Cola. By the time the feud with Wes came around, it wasn't money that motivated him. It was the principal, but he was too late. Ye's July 2007 release of Stronger veered away from traditional hip-hop, accented with visuals that further reflected West's infatuation with Japanese art, particularly Takashi Murakami's, the Japanese artist behind the graduation cover art, as well as high fashion. It was synesthesia at its best. Both Kanye West and 50 Cent were known for their enormous personalities, stemming from surviving near-fatal traumas that would finally self-crown them as Teflon. Both were archetypes of honesty in their own minds, making them characters. However, in the money game, only one can be a winner, and it all came down to safety. We all know 50 was brilliant and had tricks up his sleeve, but it became a Def Jam versus Interscope battle. 50 wasn't in the best relationship with Interscope at that point. Jay-Z's historical issues with 50 Cent were another factor, plus Hova was rapping his occupation as Def Jam president. Kanye was in tune with hip-hop's reforms, while 50 Cent was only partially advanced. In addition to Stronger, Can't Tell Me Nothing showed Ye turning from his chipmunk-tinged soul samples and moving to the future. Meantime, the pre-Curtis offerings of I Get Money and AO Technology with Justin Timberlake didn't precisely scream evolution. The two would flank each other on stage at BET's 106 in Park, giving the public what they wanted, non-threatening rap personas vying for audience participation. Of course, we all know the final results. West's graduation won with a staggering 957,000 units sold while 50 Cent sold 691,000 units. However, the Grammy scoreboard was four for West and zero for 50. However, it was clear that both won something from the mocking conflict. The only rapper big enough to challenge Kanye and 50 Cent that year was Jay-Z. American Gangster was his 10th studio album inspired by the 2007 film of the same name and was released on November 6th. American Gangster received broad critical acclaim and was viewed by music critics as returning to Jay-Z's best form following the crucial disappointment of last year's Kingdom Come. The album was also a commercial success, debuting at number one on the U.S. Billboard 200 charts, selling over 425,000 copies during the first week. A month after its release, it was certified platinum. The only girl who rivaled the big boys in 2007 was M.I.A., and her album Kala was worth pushing the rappers and stealing their crowns. Kala was the second studio album by a British hip-hop artist and was released on August 8th. M.I.A. originally planned to work with Timbaland for a bulk of the album but could not gain a long-term work visa to enter the U.S., hence she recorded the album at numerous locations worldwide, including India, Angola, Trinidad, Liberia, Jamaica, and Australia. Kala was the best performing album on the U.S. Billboard Electronic Albums chart of 2007 and was certified gold for shipping 500,000 copies in the U.S. It brought the singles Bird Flu, Boys, Jimmy, and Paper Planes, the last of which got a Grammy Award for Record of the Year nomination at the 2009 Grammy Awards. The album received global critical acclaim and was rated as one of the best albums of 2007 by many publications. When summarizing the whole year, it's impossible to name the other king of 2007, Kanye. Many have argued that West's wins were the sole identifier in rap's switch being flipped. Though the warning signs were there, a year later we would be introduced to Kid Cudi and Drake a year after that. 
arguably the purveyors of the Kanye light sound. Though he won his own Grammy two years later, 50 Cent would never return to reclaim the rap throne. One thing remains certain, hip hop became the zeitgeist of pop culture after this fateful feud, and nothing has been stronger since. But what do you think? What was the biggest hip hop event in 2007? Who won the Kanye and 50 Cent beef for you? Share your opinion in the comment section. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you don't miss an upload, and you can enjoy the excellent content we send your way. This is Dollar Black. We made you.